Before you can begin to understand the difference between the independent and dependent variable, it's important that you make sure you know what a variable is in general. The word variable in science refers to things that can change about an object you're experimenting on, and they're things that we usually measure. So for example, let's look at these beakers here of colored liquids, right? What are some things that we could measure about these liquids that um, vary from maybe beaker to beaker? Well, the most obvious thing here, right, is that they're all different colors. So color is a variable here. Now, they're all in the same type of flask, right? But that could vary. We could put them in different flasks, right? Um, what substance they are could be a variable. The amount of liquid we have, which I would call the volume of the liquid, could vary. And its weight could vary. Weight is similar to another measurement called mass, so I'll put that one up there too. They're slightly different. We'll talk about that later in the year. There's a whole bunch of things, right? I could measure the height of the liquid in there. I could measure the temperature of the liquid. And you could go on and on, right? I could measure um, the brightness. And you could probably think of dozens and dozens of things. And this is true for anything, right? If I was talking about um, you know, a tree, there would be many variables that vary from tree to tree that you could measure and so on. So once you know what a variable is, it's something you can measure, not necessarily measure with like a, an actual tool, but maybe something you can observe as being different, right? Like color isn't, you can't really measure color, but you can tell when something's one color and when something's another. And you can't really measure what substance you have, but you, you can tell that, you know, like, oh, I've got, you know, lemonade over here and orange juice over there and so on, right? So variables are these things that we can measure. And when we run an experiment, what we're usually saying is that we predict that one of these variables, if we change one of these variables, some other variable will change also because one causes the other to change. So here's the relationship between independent and dependent variables. The reason you're doing your experiment is because you suspect, you've hypothesized, that this independent variable is going to influence a change in your dependent variable. So for example, and I like to use this one all the time, if I have um, a whole bunch of shirts that are all the same except that they're different colors, right? If I have a whole host of shirts, voila, like so, right? All these sh different shirts up here. And they're all the same material, they're all made by the same company, they all have the base, same basic shape. And I predict that the darker the shirt color is, the hotter I'll be on a sunny day when I wear the shirt. Well, if that's the experiment I want to run, then what are the variables that I think, what variable do I believe is going to affect what other variable? There's one variable that I can measure that I believe if I change that thing, this other thing will change. So see if you can get your brain around that. Take a second, see if you can figure out what do you think the independent and dependent variable would be in this t-shirt experiment? Remember, I want to know what color t-shirt will make me stay coolest on a hot sunny day. You can pause if you need to. Well, in that case, it's the shirt color that is my independent variable. Notice I didn't just say color. I said shirt color because you always want to know color of what, time of what, temperature of what. And the color of my shirt I'm predicting will change what? If I change my shirt color, I'm also going to wind up changing how hot I feel. If I think about it for a second, how hot I feel has a better name. Hotness, I could call it, but temperature is probably a more scientific sounding name for that var variable. And notice I'm not just going to write temperature, I'm going to write temperature of what? Because Te it's important here. Do I mean temperature of the day? Does, do days get hotter and colder depending what shirt I wear? Uh, no, right? I'm predicting that my body temperature is going to change, right? because of the shirt color I'm wearing. So sometimes you have to struggle a little to figure out what the independent and dependent variable are in an experiment. Sometimes it's hard to put that variable into words because it's complicated, right? But 
you should be able to think your way through it by using sort of this slide. Just ask yourself, okay, what is it that I'm changing because I think changing that will change this other thing? What you probably are gonna need is lots and lots of practice. And I have plenty of worksheets that will help you practice this, which I will um, give you in class and I'll also attach in um, a, a, an assignment before we take the test on this. Figuring out the independent dependent variable is not easy. It requires that you really, really understand what both of those things are and that you spend the time to try and figure it out, right? I always say to students, it's a little bit like wrestling with a bear. You got to work at it. It's not, the bear's not coming down all on its own. You got to move, move that brain around and figure this stuff out. So don't give up on independent and dependent variable just because it's hard. Practice will get you better at it. And if you need someone to sit with you one-on-one -on -one and do examples so that you can kind of not get lost or so that you can wrestle the bear with a little bit of help, let me know and I will be happy to help you. See you guys in class.